A new plant in Trois South is slated to start producing sustainable aviation fuel from early next year. The plant by Finland's Neste will have a capacity of 1 million tons a year and will be the world's largest sustainable aviation fuel plant. But how far can this go towards decarbonizing the sector? Well, for more, we speak with Sami Jauhjainen. He's vice president of renewable aviation at Neste. So, Sami, thank you for joining us. One of the more interesting aspects of your sustainable aviation fuel is the type of feedstock that you use. Where does Neste source this fuel from? Well, to produce our sustainable aviation fuel, uh, we are using various waste and residue raw materials, uh, such as used cooking oil and animal waste fats, uh, for example. And we are sourcing these uh, raw materials uh, globally, uh, for example, around the Asia-Pacific region, and then bringing it to our refinery for uh, processing into high-quality uh, fuels. So, Sammy, sustainable aviation fuel, as you've mentioned, is made from sustainable feedstock, and I believe it's also a fuel that can immediately replace a fossil jet without the need to, you know, uh, reconfigure engines or invest in new infrastructure. And this sounds amazing, but uh, why isn't every airline basically rushing to convert? Well, well, positively, we are seeing many airlines taking sustainable aviation fuel into use. For example, this year. Singapore Airlines uh, has started using Nestle sustainable aviation fuel at the Changi Airport. Uh, leading airlines in Japan, uh, Hong Kong, Malaysia, uh, New Zealand are doing the same. Uh, so concrete steps are being taken. But of course, the challenge remains that sustainable aviation fuel is more expensive than, than conventional jet fuel. And it is not easy for, for airlines to uh, just substitute uh, conventional jet fuel with SAF if their competitors are not obligated to do the same. As you mentioned, Sammy, the cost is a factor, but what's wrapped up in, in that high cost? Do you expect it to become more competitive at some point? And, and has the current energy crisis changed the outlook for that? Well, well, certainly it's a feature of the markets that uh, the price of our raw materials as well as that of conventional jet fuel and oil is, is, is continuously changing. And we do expect that as the scale of uh, sustainable aviation fuel production increases, as it becomes part of normal air operations in the, in the airports, there is a lot of uh, potential for efficiencies uh, through that. But at the same time, it is difficult to see that uh, sustainable aviation fuel could be competitive relative to the cost of fossil jet fuel if the cost of emissions is not priced into that. Mm. So, Neste, you know, you're adding another million tonnes a year of production capacity here in Singapore, and as you've mentioned, it's pretty costly. Uh, so, who are your buyers? So, so we are supplying sustainable aviation fuel to many leading uh, airlines uh, around the world. Uh, just to give you one example, a few weeks ago, we signed our biggest um, agreement uh, uh, ever uh, with the Air France KLM, uh, to whom we will be supplying a million tons of sustainable aviation fuel in the course of, of next uh, eight years. So in addition to airlines, we are also uh, supplying many oil companies, fuel distributors that are helping to, uh, to grow the availability of the, of the product in the market by distributing it to the airlines uh, through their networks around the world. Right. So you've mentioned the, uh, the quantum that KLM uh, is, is taking on by way of sustainable aviation fuel. But what about here uh, in Singapore and in Asia? How far are we adopting sustainable aviation fuel? I mean, apart from uh, Singapore Airlines that you mentioned. Well, in big picture, the situation probably is that the uh, Asia-Pacific region is, is still in early stages of sustainable aviation fuel adoption, if comparing to Europe or, or North America. Um, but that being said, uh, we are seeing that the, the leading airlines, as well as the front-runner countries, are taking, uh, taking steps and, and, and setting targets and timelines for SAF use that are quite well aligned with what we see in, in, in Europe and North America. 
So, for example, in Japan, both the Japanese government, uh, the leading airlines, uh, ANA and Japan Airlines, have all set the target of 10% sustainable aviation fuels by 2030. Uh, in New Zealand, we see that the government looks to set a minimum requirement for sustainable aviation fuel use by, by 2025. And, and here in Singapore, uh, the government is working to establish and publish by next year uh, a blueprint for positioning Singapore as a sustainable air hub. Uh, and, and that blueprint, we would look to uh, include uh, concrete initiatives to drive uh, self-adoption uh, in, here in Singapore. Sammy, thank you very much for talking to us about sustainable aviation fuel. Uh, Sammy Jochjainen there from Neste.